So this deals with uh, observations of Polaris and latitude on the flat earth model. And so we see we basically have Polaris here, uh, which is situated approximately directly above the North Pole. And we have three locations on the surface of the Earth. Uh, we have Longyearbyen, which is approximately 1300 kilometers from the North Pole and have an approximate latitude of 78 degrees. We have Minneapolis, which is situated approximately 5000 kilometers from the North Pole and have an approximate latitude of 45 degrees. And we have the equator, which is approximately around 10,000 kilometers from the North Pole. And obviously, uh, the latitude is zero degrees. Um, that these values are approximate makes no difference for the main point I'm trying to get across here. So, if we assume that Polaris is 5,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, we see that Minneapolis, and in this model, and the latitude or the angle you get when you use a sextant to measure the angle between a level and a straight line to Polaris, it matches uh, the observed value, the actual value, what we see in the real world. So this model, for this particular height, if you will, of Polaris, it matches for Minneapolis. However, it doesn't match for the equator and it doesn't match for longer being. And especially for the equator, we have a big problem. And when you look at, like this is to scale. So the interesting thing here is the angle. And if you're going, going to try and explain away that we see from from the equator that we actually see the Polaris at zero degrees, which is just above the horizon. We're gonna try and use perspective to explain that, then I'm afraid you don't understand perspective. Sorry. Okay, so let's try and make things better for observations at the equator. What if it's all down to how high Polaris is above the surface of the Earth? So we're gonna uh, lower it to a thousand kilometers above the surface of the Earth, which I guess no one believes. Um, and we see that we're getting closer. But still, the degree here, like the angle, is so big that if you're going to try and use perspective again to explain why suddenly Polaris seems to hover directly above the horizon, um, it's not it's not going to work. Uh, but if we do that, we also see that um, this model predicts uh, values for the latitude that are horribly wrong. Okay, so let's go the other way then. We're back at 5,000, which matches Minneapolis. And we'll go to 6,000 if, let's say, Polaris is 6,000 kilometers above the surface. We see that for longer being, well, it kind of matches now. However, for Minneapolis, uh, it doesn't. And of course, the equator is way off. But I don't think no one actually believes that the stars are only 6,000 kilometers away. So let's just try and increase this at least to 10,000. And things obviously get much worse. And if we want to like increase this height further, let's say to a million kilometers, 
we see that everything goes horribly wrong with this model. So if you have an ounce of uh, faith in what the astronomers do, then obviously this model doesn't hold water as a million kilometers is nothing compared to the value that they suspect, like the distance to Polaris. Okay, so this is a model for the Polaris observations. If we assume that we live on a spherical Earth. So the um, locations are the same. It's the same distance uh, from the North Pole and the same latitudes. Um, it's just that the distances are on a circle. The same distance only on a curved surface. So we're starting off in the other end here. And if we assume that Polaris is very, very, very far away, in this case, seems to be a limitation on the software and the accuracy here that we're operating with. Um, so I've set the, the maximum distance to 100 million kilometers, which is of course dwarfed by the assumed actual value and the actual distance to Polaris. But in terms of this demonstration, it's, it's sufficiently far away. Um, if you assume that, we see that the model uh, predicts what we actually see. Like Minneapolis is 45 degrees close, uh, the equator is 0 degrees, uh, longer being 78 degrees. So it, it's a good, it fits, it fits. So, of course, somebody may wonder if I just drew these lines straight up and thereby ignoring that Polaris seems like a point source in the sky, mm, but I haven't. And I also want to show that once you get to like really big distances, it, you know, and increase in like seemingly big increases in distance doesn't matter that much. So I'm going to take this distance, lower the height, see if I go down to... Nothing much happened actually if you look at the angles until we get to around 70 million. So we decreased the, the height by 30 million kilometers and it made like zero 0.01 degree difference for the equator. So you see that if we decrease the height here, it doesn't, doesn't make much difference until we get like relatively close to the surface of the Earth. And we can go down to point. We see that if, if Polaris is 5,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, Obviously, this model is wrong, very wrong. You shouldn't be able to see Polaris at all from the equator. Uh, and if we go the other way, you see that it's still wrong. These increments are in 2,000 kilometers. See that they become increasingly correct the further away Polaris is. But even at oops, even at hundred thousand kilometers, it's not correct. So a way for flat earthers to disprove a globe thing is to actually prove and measure the distance to Polaris. If they can 
measure that Polaris is, say, 10,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, then we have a big problem. As things don't line up here. But I'm gonna go with this version where Polaris is really, 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 really far away. And whoops, things seems to match real world observations. 